been an exciting little adventure. Um, my next door neighbor called me and said, there are three big German shepherds in your yard running around in the irrigation. <laughs> um, as you can see, we're, we were irrigating and um, she said, are your cats out? And yes, they were. Um, and Monica was on the patio. So <clears throat> I went out front to see where the dogs were and they had gone around the back and then I hear all this barking and they were barking at Monica. So thankfully they were really well behaved um, dogs. And so they came to me. Um, and then Chad had jumped up onto the patio. And then, um, so I got the dog shooed out of the yard. My neighbor said that animal control had already been called. Got him shooed out of the yards and closed the gate. Normally I would just keep him in there, but I didn't know where Mary was. Finally, Mary came up to the patio and I let them all in. Um, and then uh, I thought I knew who the dogs belonged to. So I drove down there and it, it wasn't theirs. By the time I got back, animal control was there and the owner had been driving around looking for them, worried sick. And so she, um, she came and got them. So um, a good end to a crazy little story. Hi guys, um, thought I would do a little car chat. Uh, so I'm on my way up to Flagstaff for physical therapy. I'm also gonna stop and get some um, some more moving boxes. And um, it seemed like there was something else I needed to do. Oh, yeah, I was gonna get a shoe insert, but I didn't bring the right shoe with me. Oh well, guess that's not happening today. Um, so anyway, the frustrating thing that's been happening with me uh, today and yesterday and the day before that is that um, I've gotten this um, screw up with my uh, pension and um, what happens is that for the first two months, two to three months, um, they don't deduct any health insurance from, from your um, checks, from your pension checks until all the paperwork gets processed and then they tell you, they warn you that um, that you know in your third or fourth pension check that you're going to notice all those months of health insurance being deducted so um, I had actually every check I was getting I was setting the the amount for health insurance aside so that you know I had something to cover it well I as they said there was nothing deducted in January or February and then in March my pension check had a deduction in there um, but before that came in before my pension check came in March I had gotten a bill from another entity it's it's not the Arizona retirement system but it's another entity that kind of deals with you know other stuff and in, including health insurance um, they had sent me a bill and said here's your bill for January and February's health insurance and I thought oh well, that's interesting they didn't deduct it from my pension and they said you can go onto our website and pay it. So I did. Um, like $2,900, more than $2,900, almost $3,000. And so that's for um, my health insurance and John's. Um, yeah, a lot. But anyway, so so then in March, my, um, my premium was taken out as it was supposed to be. And in April, my premium was taken out as it was supposed to be. And then I get my pension check for April or for May and there's like almost nothing in it because and it, so what they had actually done is taken three months worth of health insurance premiums out of my pension check so I'm like wait a second I already paid this I already paid this money um, and um, so then I'm calling the two I'm calling the Arizona retirement system and I'm also calling this other administrative office and they're both saying, well, they're the ones who made the mistake, you need to call them. And I have been back and forth between these two entities. Finally, at one of the places, I have like a really high up person um, who is seems to be helping me, but he's been the only person who, I guess maybe has the ability to make contact with the other entity to talk to them because they've been saying like you need to tell them this and then the other side says well you need to tell them this and I'm like can you guys just talk to each other instead of telling me and they're like you know we can't just give you a mo you money just because you're saying that you are owed money 
like, well then talk to the other side. So I have, um, I, this guy I just talked to and, and he said that he's going to, uh, try to get a hold of the person he needs to talk to, to straighten this out. Because, um, I mean, thankfully we don't live to the very last penny. Um, otherwise this would be, I mean, this could be bad for somebody if people didn't have money set aside and thankfully we do. I mean, I certainly am not going to let go of $3,000, but, um, this has been very frustrating and I'm hoping I'll get it resolved today. Hi guys. It is, uh, Sunday. Yeah. Um, May 12th and, um, I am driving over to, uh, it feels weird on Sunday to not go to church, but um, I am driving over to Cottonwood to go to Walmart, and it's it's about I don't know 25 minute drive from our house. I need to get some a few little grocery items. We're trying to eat up a lot of the stuff that's in our freezer and, and refrigerator. So um, when John said, "Oh, you're actually going to shop," I was like, "No, no." I mean, if you have some little things to get, then yes, but we need to focus on eating what we have. And um, so I have a few things for that, but mainly um, the reason I'm choosing to go to Walmart is because I've decided to get a different shower curtain for one of the bathrooms in this house. Um, that one, I, I call it the pine cone bathroom. I don't know if you remember seeing that. It has a, a painting that my mom did of pine cones. And, and then I'm just looking at how dark it seems in the viewfinder. Um, and um, there are some pine cones in there and some different things. And the shower curtain in there is a forest. And so, and I really like it. And it's not like it was terribly expensive. It was $30, but I looked for it. Like I hunted around on Amazon and different places looking for uh, the thing that I thought would be the best match for the pinecone bathroom. And, um, and it was, I don't know, 35 or $40 or something like that. And I thought, nobody's going to choose to buy a house because of, because of a, um, a shower curtain and so you know whether that one is there or not is going to make no difference to anybody you know buying our house or not so so I just and, and if, if people see it and that shower curtain is there then I have to leave it once the people come and see the house and make an offer they make an offer on whatever you know curtains you have up and things like that so um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a different shower curtain for in there and take that one with us. And so, yeah, so that's why I'm going to Walmart. There's a couple other things I need to pick up. Uh, today is going to be another packing day. I mean, that's pretty much going to be every single day between now and, you know, the time we move. So, um, we'll, John will probably work some more on the barn. We're to the point where we just have a lot of awkward things in there. And so this week, what we're doing is every day that we go up to Flagstaff and I'm going up three days this week. And John, of course, for work, will be going up four. So, we're just going to take some stuff to the storage unit every day, like just awkward things, rakes and empty flower pots and stuff like that. Um, so we'll do that every day and then um, try to, you know, get the rest of the barn stuff cleared out. And I have a, a neighbor who's a teacher down the street and she's going to be taking some of my teaching stuff that I'm currently sifting through in my garage. And I'm just hoping that by the end of this week, between us working on boxing some things up and taking things to the storage unit, that um, the barn and the garage will be finished, um, you know, close to the end of this week. And that really will make the rest, I mean, that's usually what's where people get hung up or where we get hung up with moves is all of these things at the end that we're like, uh, okay, just throw it in the car. Um, you know, and we drive away with these vehicles that are absolutely jam packed with stuff. Um, we want, I mean, when we move out that we will not have closed on a house and so it will still be ours. So we can certainly come back and, you know, get some stuff, leave some things, but I'd rather not do that. We have movers. I'd like to have the movers move 
as much stuff as possible. So, um, then, um, yeah, so, so if we get those things done, then really what we have left to do is, um, I have, uh, one guest bedroom that has a closet that's filled with quite a few things, um, gift wrapping stuff and some extra toiletries and, you know, just some different things. So, so that one's going to require filling a few boxes and then what else do we have? There's a hall, cl hall closet that has a bunch of miscellaneous kinds of things. It has some bathroom extras and there's some luggage at the bottom of that and there's I hang all my wreaths in there my little seasonal wreaths um, are hung in there so so that one's gonna be a couple of boxes coat closets already done um, and then there's the kitchen um, so and laundry room so kitchen and laundry room so those will definitely take some um, some oh and and decor so John will be John will be in charge of taking down the decor and all of that and then I will pack up the kitchen stuff so so there's still quite a bit to do but I have always found that it's while a kitchen takes a long time to pack up I've always found that it's all of those things that those extra things the things you forgot about that um, come from the barn and, or come from the garage um, we've never had a barn before but that come from the garage that make packing kind of difficult so uh, yeah, I mean, we're just ramping up and I don't want to, life is, I don't want my life to be too inconvenient yet in the house, but by the end of this coming week, um, we'll be in full on move mode, eating off paper plates and all that kind of stuff. So, hi guys, it's Monday the 14th and, uh, I'm on my way over to the vet with Monica. She gets spayed today. Um, she is actually a few days beyond, let's see, she would have been six months old on the 11th, and um, we were supposed to get her spayed a month ago, but then um, you may remember that uh, John forgot and fed her the morning that we were supposed to have her spayed, but that was the week that Debbie died, and we left the very next day to go down to see her, and so it really was best that she didn't get spayed at that time, but I was afraid that in the meantime that she was going to go into heat because they usually have their first heat at around six months old and um yeah it doesn't surprise me that she has not gone into heat yet though because she seems a little like when I think back on Vanessa as a puppy she just seems a little less mature than Vanessa like Vanessa's ears were already popped up at three months and um, she seemed to uh, lost her teeth sooner than um, than Monica and so so it doesn't surprise me but um, there are some schools of thought about when to spay an animal um, sometimes some people believe very strongly that you should um, do it before they have their first heat and some people say that there are advantages to letting them go through their first heat um, we kind of weighed the evidence and decided to do it before her first heat so um, I'm happy that it actually happened that way. Uh, so I, you know, I was going to go up to um, Flagstaff tomorrow for a physical therapy appointment, but then I started to think, I think I'm going to cancel that one. I have another one on Thursday, but um, I just don't know how Monica's going to be with her incision. When Chloe was spayed, she, we, we didn't know about, I mean, Vanessa was spayed before. Oh no, we had Vanessa spayed. I don't remember how Vanessa was after her spay but Chloe didn't even care she just you know didn't didn't pay any attention to the incision completely left it alone um, I don't know if Monica is going to be one that's going to be really bothered by it and it's going to try to lick it all the time I don't know if she's going to have to wear a cone uh, Chloe never had to but because we pick her up this afternoon and then <clears throat> I would be going to my physical therapy physical therapy appointment tomorrow morning I just don't know if being left in her cage if then she'll just get busy and start you know licking and licking and licking Vanessa would always obsessively licked at wounds and things like that 
throughout her life so we always had to use cones and things for her um, so I don't know how she's gonna be and I just hate the idea of just leaving her um, without knowing so I think if, if I wait and stay home with her for the next couple of days then on thir by Thursday we should know because I can put her in her cage if she's not going at it then I can put her in her cage and then like leave her there for 15 minutes half an hour leave the house you know to run a quick errand and come back and see how she's been with it and if she's left it alone before I would you know trust her with that so anyway um, this morning um, I am going up to Flagstaff um, later this morning for um, for a luncheon for retirees from the university so um, so that's kind of I don't know I was gonna say that'll be fun I don't know if it's gonna be fun or not they did send us a little survey and asked us different things about like what what we're gonna do in retirement and how long were we at the university and what was our favorite memory of our time at at NAU oh my gosh 15 years worth of stuff to think of so um, so I don't know what they're gonna do with that but I thought that that would be nice especially because I didn't get to go to the award ceremony um, when I got promoted to emeritus status um, I thought it would be nice to go to this retirement lunch I could have brought somebody with me but my mom's not in town and John's working and so I'm just gonna go by myself which is not a big deal um, I'm gonna stop at the storage unit to drop off a few things John is also doing that so um, each day John's gonna take some stuff up there the two days that I'll be in Flagstaff this week, I'll take some things there. Um, yeah, we're finding more and more awkward things. Like, what are we going to do with our composter? One of them breaks down, but the other one doesn't. So I got to see if I can find somebody who maybe would like to use a composter for a couple of years. <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But, um, and then, um, that's, well, my plan when I get home today is just to, um, really, um, finish up some stuff in the garage. I have one more box of stuff from my office. I know that I'm probably not keeping almost any of it, uh, but I just need to make sure I go through it and make sure that it, none of the... Uh, binders have any confidential information in them because I've been going through boxes and finding things that needed to be shredded um, just identifying information about students and things like that so um, just stuff I had to you know get rid of um, I had fingerprint clearance cards for students and stuff like that so those all got shredded and so these last uh, this last box of binders I think most of it's just I think most of it's just research like not not data but like um, stuff I've written up about um, studies and some stuff like that data would have to be shredded so um, plus data has a there's a timeline on on when data needs to be shredded and so um, you can't just hang on to it forever and ever um, they monitor that kind of stuff um, so, um, so yeah, there's that. And then there's a couple of boxes that just kind of have some stuff that was, it was on the garage shelf. And when John was taking the shelves apart, he just sort of threw the stuff in those boxes. So I need to kind of neatly pack those things and decide which things go in the apartment and which things go into storage. So this is North Campus at NAU, and this is the 1899 Garden Grill that's on campus. Um, there's a dorm over here, um, parking garage, and I just came from the luncheon, and look what they got all of us. We got a suitcase, and it says Northern Arizona University. It's a really nice suitcase, too. So it's very strange, but my retirement feels very official. 
right now. You know, I I um, had so much going on with um, you know with my dad dying, with being sick, and then dying, and then my mother-in-law, and so didn't really have much time to think about it. And then I taught a class in March. Well, starting in March, I've got hair in my mouth, um, and. And then with moving and all that kind of stuff, it just um, didn't really sink into me that I was retired. And that just really felt like it, you know? Like they called each person's name and told stuff about us and then gave us our little suitcase. And um, it was just, uh, yeah, I think it kind of kind of really hit me that I'm retired. <laughs> um, of course I'm gonna be writing eventually. Um, once we get settled in back up here and stuff that'll be great but um, I'm very happy about being back coming back to Flagstaff and um, just kind of a weird feeling to think that I'll be back here but not officially working for NAU at least in a full time capacity okay I just have to show you this is North Campus more of North Campus it is so pretty I love this campus it's just if I wasn't driving I would show you more of like old main and stuff like that but um, but sorry for the smash bugs on my windshield but um, I just think this campus is breathtakingly beautiful I got two of my degrees here and worked here for 15 years look at poor little Monica she doesn't feel good. Yeah, she's got spayed. Everything went well with her spay, but she doesn't feel very good. She's on pain medication. She was crying earlier, so I gave her some. Um, anyway, just tr keeping her in her crate, keeping her, keeping her calm and letting her sleep. Yeah, baby, I know. Hi hey guys, uh, it is Tuesday and, is it Tuesday? Yeah, <laughs> I can never remember anymore. Um, anyway, I, um, I wanted to tell you about a product I tried which is really great. Uh, you may remember that um, several weeks ago I got my hair colored red and um, when it faded it just, it just became really orange and um, yeah, I didn't like it. So I got this L'Oreal Preference um, hair color in golden blonde and about two weeks after I had had it colored, I, I put this on and, um, and I like it. I like it a lot now. Um, but anyway, coloring my hair twice in two weeks left my hair super dry. I mean, I mean, no surprise. I knew that it wasn't going to be great, but I just didn't want to have orange hair. So, uh, so I tried a product that I absolutely love. I got this at Walmart. Um, this is called Home Spa Hair Treatment. Um, they have three different kinds, at least there were three that were there on the shelf. Um, one's for damaged hair, one I can't remember what it was, maybe it's just for regular hair, I don't know. This one's um, for colored hair, and it's a hair mask. So what you do with it, it's got two sections in this packet. Um, the top section is the conditioner and the bottom section has a cap. And so what you do is you um, get in the shower, wash your hair, do all your shower business, rinse, you know, rinse the shampoo out, and then go ahead and um, kind of squeeze out as much water as you can so your hair is damp but not drippy. And then you go ahead and put this in. Um, then uh, pile your hair on your head, and then you open the bottom section, which is like this little cap that is kind of foil looking on the outside, and it's got a different kind of um, something on the inside. But you put that over your hair, and then it's got a little adhesive thing that you can pull over to make it really snug around your head. And then just get out of the shower. Um, you're supposed to leave it on your hair for 15 minutes or so. And so I just put on a robe and just went and did some things until I was done. And um, then you get back in the shower and you rinse it out. Well, this stuff is amazing. It made my hair so smooth and um, moisturized and it feels so good. It was feeling really, really dry. And um, yeah. 
So, um, so anyway, it says that if your hair is really damaged, that you should use it twice a week. Um, I imagine that doing it twice a month is probably enough if your hair is not damaged. There's quite a lot in here. It was plenty of, of conditioner for my long hair. So you could probably get away with using half of it and then just rinsing out and saving the cap for the next time you do it if your hair is not as long. Um, like I said, I got it at Walmart and I think it was $3.97 a packet. I think that's how much it was. Not, not, not too much, especially if you're only using it a couple times a month. But I would just highly recommend this stuff. It was really, really good, and my hair just feels great and just to radically different than it felt a few days ago. Yeah.